Kacki! Co za mój śledź, suka! Today on Grand Thumb, the SIG M338. You know, SIG has already won the M250, and that's going to be replacing the saw. But a bigger question is, will the 338 be replacing the M240? Will it be replacing the 50 cal? Perhaps in SOCOM, we don't know. The SIG M338, we're going to do all the testing on it, we're going to talk about it. We have the SIG employees themselves here to explain it. But before we get into that, we of course have to thank the sponsors of the channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is who, Charles? Korean meat bathing suits. Sonoran Desert Institute, it's getting further away every time. The Sonoran Desert Institute, right. if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We cannot thank them enough. And of course, who can we not forget, Micah? Primary Arms. Uh, and they make an optic that's cooler than, I don't know where I'm going with this, but they're good. We like them. Uh, cooler than World War II. There you have it, cooler than World War II. And of course, all ammunition is always sponsored by AC Ammunition, which unlike your phone, the camera, equipment, and everything that we do all this on, is actually made in America. So a big thank you to them. Now in the case of the ammunition that we have today, of course, this is directly provided by SIG. And the weapon, of course, the M338, is not ours, but is from SIG so that we can do this video on it. So with everything out of the way, let's go ahead, let's get into it, let's start testing this guy. Now, here we have St. John from SIG. Thank you for, thank you, thank you for. Nice to see you again, Mike. Hey, good to see you again. Uh, you did a great friend. job with the M250 video. So good of a job that they actually let you come to us this time. Well, like I told you, I moved the needle, right? Not in content, but in comments. So, in so ha ha handsome good looks and the, uh, the uh, erotic mustache. <laughs> that wasn't going to be how I described it, but it's, it's, it's something. Okay, the M338, <laughs> can you explain to me the thought process behind this? Is, what do you guys classify this as? This is a medium machine gun? Yeah, this is the uh, SIG medium machine gun. MMG. Um, it's a machine gun that was developed out of a necessity from an operational capabilities gap from the U.S. Army to kind of bridge that distance between a 7.62 and a 50 cal and really a little bit closer to the 50 cal side, right? So 7.62 M240, M240 machine gun capabilities, 800 meters on a point target. This is, you know, extending it to 1500 meters, anti-material capability. It really bleeds or bleeds into that M2 50 cal space. So from reading up on it, I understand that the M338 is capable of 1500 on a point target. 2,000 on an area and about 6,000 total. So we have quite a bit of range on this and a big, I think, uh, reason for the development of this was overmatch because this is a much lighter weapon than the M2 and it's uh, it's actually three pounds lighter than the M2, M240 depending on the variant? Uh, depending on the variant. So our gun right now, the Gen 3 is coming in at about 23.1 pounds. So you Light. could say 60 pounds lighter than an M2. And when you look at the capability gap, you know, if you think about it from what was going on the last 22 years, you know, it's kind of a good example when you're looking out here at uh, Mr. Crazy Guy with the rake over there. But when you look at the ridge to ridge capability, the ridge to valley, valley capability, the man portability of being able to take this up the mountain, and then when you look at it from a simple blocking position, the only way of being able to have an anti-material, anti-vehicular capability before was bringing a heavy weapon. And now sure. I can give it to a guy like you and you can carry it to the, to the battlefield. That's it. Right here we have 50 cal. Right here we have the 338 Norma Magnum. This is open tip. We're going to go ahead. We're going to shoot it on the ballistic dummy. We're going to look at the capability. And then we're going to do some more you know, figuring out on this and seeing how it, how it performs. But uh, talk is cheap and ammunition is paid for by SICK. <laughs> and the best way to figure out ballistics is going to be, of course, what, Charles? W Labs Ballistic Dummies. This is the North Korean version, as you can tell. It, it, it's a good approximation to uh, ballistic performance. Now, of course, the 338 is a very powerful round. We're very close. This is, you know, saving Private Ryan on the beach style, you know? Oh, uh, but from the other side? 
More! More! John, more! I'm out. That's all you had? Give us a give us a belt! Get it. Yeah. I need a reload! I got you! Obviously the M338 uh, with the 338 Norman Magnum is an incredibly powerful round uh, and as you can see here it absolutely shredded the body in half because it is a extremely violent car cartridge. It's it's really it's really good. Yeah. I, I do want to say that this is actually the highest level of carnage that we've gotten from a from from a weapon. I understand that the barrel change is quite quick on the M338. Yeah, purposely. Um, obviously, with a machine gun, you want to be able to change the barrel quite quick, quickly, as you were kind of talking earlier about, you know, how a machine gun works and area fire and beaten zones and stuff like that. And a high volume, obviously, is the gun. High volume fire makes it heat up. Usually, you have a you know a gun team, and one of the person's responsibility is to manage the gun while the guy's firing the gun, and barrel changes are required. Well, and we can't show that on YouTube, but it is as quick as a snap of the fingers right here. Yeah, so That's quick. <laughs> so normally Saint just John a snap of the like fingers. Me. No, it's just a snap of the fingers. <laughs> yeah, snap of the fingers. Uh, no, so it is a so what you have here is you have the assault version of the barrel. So when you do look at the gun overall length, it's quite large. Even though it's a lightweight machine gun, mm -hmm. you know, at 23 pounds, you put a 24 inch barrel on it so that you can get that 2,000 meter capability. Um, the nice thing about the assault, shorter assault barrel is it allows you an opportunity to still be supersonic past 1,500 meters and be a little bit more maneuverable for, you know, an assault machine gun type what, role. What's the length on the barrel on this guy? Uh, this one right here is 17 inches. Okay, and that's supersonic past 15? It is, yes. Impressive, very impressive. It is impressive. That is actually pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, the round's pretty magical, really, when you think about it. And so we talked a lot about the recoil mitigation system. So if you don't mind, we could uh, show a little bit of the shooting here. Uh, Mike, if we have you get on the side and then uh, just kind of see what that looks like. Yeah, we can, we can definitely do that. So... Um, before we go on, yeah. I, I was going to, I didn't know we only were kind of getting towards the end here, so it kind of feels oh, yeah. odd bringing it up because it was the first thing I wanted to bring up with you was uh, I was excited for you today because it, it's kind of been a complete journey for me and it's always an exciting day at SIG, but, you know, I seen you got that Toyota pickup up there, four-wheel drive, TRD Pro, you know, you probably had a Miata or some exo exotic sports car like that. You look like a guy who's been compensating his whole life, and uh, <laughs> I would say <laughs> that when you, Christ. well, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, he's not wrong. But uh, that journey is complete today with the 338 machine gun. Yeah, I can um, overcompensate I, for everything in my entire life, yeah. all my failures. And that he's no, going to walk and cool. shoot it. Look at Stop me, I'm sitting, John. I work you out sometimes. Them, you can hold them tripods if you want while firing, too. You know, kind of. God <laughs> damn. What? Oh, God damn. Jesus, boy. fuck. Boy. Not bad. Not bad. Better than me. Because <laughs> I, I fired it standing earlier. It didn't seem that bad. That just whooped my Wait, fucking Micah, ass. Wait, Micah, do you think that you could fire that standing? I could walk and shoot that. Better than John Crane, even. What was that look, John? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. <laughs> do I got to push this forward? Yep. Oh lord. All right. Why are you getting in front of it? Just stop walking back. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, hey, to be clear, nobody showed me how to load it, and I just loaded it. Nice job. Oh, great job. That gives us a lot of confidence on the you walking and shooting. Proud of you. All right. You want to shoot it standing first before you try to walk? No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, baby. Yeah, I stood. I stood still. <laughs> All right. Okay, try it. Here we go. I can't do it! I couldn't do it! How'd you do that? One more try. One more okay, try. Okay. I'm coming back for redemption. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That is so weird. 
I'm actually, okay, John, I made fun of you, but color me impressed. Short barrel is way lighter. So we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the points that we haven't really gotten to in just shooting it. So first off, with the suppressor that we have here, um, this is mostly like a signature reduction, right? When it comes to sound and uh, for the shooter and flash downrange, correct? Yeah, I'd say that that's probably a more of a primary function of a machine gun suppressor, but obviously yeah. it does have some sound suppression, sound suppressive qualities as well, right? Mm -hmm. And that suppressor is built from, you know, we've talked in previous shows about the Surge program to the SLX suppressor that's on the NGSW guns. This is our BLX, which is a, an extension of the SLX, which is trying to evacuate those gases from the shooter. Um, I think when you shot this, when you were up in New Hampshire, maybe six, eight months ago, the Gen 2 gun with the Gen 2 suppressor, you ate a lot of gas. I did, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, it was a standard, normal, welded baffle design type of can. And so we've you know, put our flow through technology in there. And you, know, you figure the challenge is that for one, you got a high pressure round, but it's also about 100 grains of powder compared to you know 46 to 48 with a 7.62 machine gun. So there's a lot more gas. And so I don't think you probably experienced much of that today, um, and specifically comparatively, significantly less. It was way better this time around. Um, yep. Definite improvement that we're seeing there. Um, kind of moving down here, um, as far as the um, mounting points, we have we just have our standard M lock that we have, you know, just going down for whatever you might need. And then when it comes to the optic mounting, what I've always liked about whether it be the M250 or the 338 is the fact that, like, compared to the saw, this Picatinny rail isn't moving, so that's going to ensure just a more consistent zero. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a more fixed rail on it. You know, coming back up a little bit, two position gas. It's usually normal and adverse, not suppressed, unsuppressed. Works in, in either position. Mm -hmm. um, we've got our bipod leg, same one on the NGSW, John. I know that. You know, it, 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 we've, we talked about a few things that were their positives and negatives about it. Um, if you, you know, we've got the captured top rail that I told you was going to come on the uh, XM250 eventually. So you have that ta captured top rail so that when you do have your inline optics, they rotate out mm -hmm. to do your barrel change and you don't have to worry about the top cover coming off. Really, you know, it's kind of an extension of our small gun. The big gun is really, even though the big gun was born first, um, side opening feed tray uh, cover. Um, we've did some improvements since the last time. We've got some ammo keeps, still can load it open, open uh, feed tray or closed feed tray with the spoon pull through. Similar design that you see on the NGSW for the magazine magwell. And I'm supposed to get a shout out to my friend, uh, my friend Nikki. She's like, oh, that gun has a uh, ammo purse. So, I mean, I thought that that's, was... That's the name of it, actually. Yeah, it that's is an correct. ammo purse. That is actually so correct. I told her I'd give her a shout out for that. <laughs> Good, so. yeah. But I thought it was quite unique. But uh, obviously the... Um, magazine drum uh, you know we got 50 and 100 round mm -hmm. for for this gun uh, one of the unique features on the gun is that it's uh, left side or right side charge left side or right side feed so you can configure this gun so when you start thinking about like say dual mounts boat mounts and things like that rather than having to have an offset like you would have in your 7.62 machine guns to allow for the feeding on both sides you can bring them in together and you can have them feed from left to right side and manage it that direction um, Foldable buttstock, collapsible buttstock, modular buttstock. Um, the buttstock can actually be just rotate the hinge, switch over the tube, and all of a sudden now it folds to the left or right depending on what you want to have it. We have convenient. We have butter, butterfly grips for it, um, and then you know when you get back into the AR style control, similar to our NGSW, full auto first. It's a machine gun first, semi auto second for that long range engagement, that 1500, 2000 meter area that we were talking about earlier in the video. It doesn't feel quite like a 180 degree turn to get to that to that semi auto. It feels like no, it's uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I think it's just another 30 degrees. It's, it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's, I've always hated like the full 180 on like the old M16s and everything. Absolutely, it's never a good time. And then from a functional standpoint. You know, John, you being a machine gunner, you understand, especially, you know, aircraft loading. You know, when you aircraft loaded before, put the rounds on top, and, you know, you're putting on fire in a helicopter as you're coming in to land. On fire, trigger, being pulled, you're holding it to the rear, right? And then putting it on safe and then letting everything go forward. We solved that problem. There's no sear bind issues with this gun. You can aircraft load it. When it's on safe, you can charge it and go. So we've kind of managed, you know, that aspect that we, we didn't really like about machine guns as well. So... Um, this is a Gen 3. Uh, the Gen 4 gun is actually, I think when you were up at the plant may have been, man, it was just last summer, I think. Yeah, not too long ago. And that was when we were in the beginning of our Gen 3 gun and testing, and we're already building our Gen 4s now, which is the improvements upon this. Um, and, you know, we will turn those Gen 4 guns into the Army program this summer for, you know, to an opportunity to be selected. 
between Gen 2 and Gen 4, we're going to have close to 800,000 rounds and 300,000 of those being the specific ammunition that the Army's going to uh, test with. And, you know, that's, a, that's kind of an extensive amount of testing you think about it, specifically when you start talking 4 to $5 a bullet. And so it's, it's fine. It's like you guys will be okay. I'm I'm probably taking some of John's equipment here as a down payment for everything he shot today. So it's okay. Was, everything that John has, you can have. I can have. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really fine. John, um, so you've got, gotten a lot of um, trigger time on this today, probably about 400 rounds. Uh, what are your impressions um, having had so much time on the other uh, belt fed systems? I'd say the four biggest things that I like. Number one being that safety, yeah. because like you said, aircraft loading, that makes it a lot safer, but also newer guys, whenever they're first learning their machine guns, they'll a lot of times they'll rack a 240 or a saw on safe, and it's it's a bitch to get that uh, un, unmessed up. <laughs> Second one is, uh, you already touched on it, optic being on a, uh, a rigid, um, not moving Picatinny rail. Not only is that obviously better for zero, but also my red dot isn't jumping around as much because the, the feed tray cover would be rattling. Um, next, I really like how the uh, the nutsack or the ammo purse goes into the gun. It's a <laughs> big improvement, big improvement over uh, trying to get that dovetail in perfectly. Um, this one, it's just simple, click straight in, and then just pop straight out. Um, and lastly, M lock way of the future, but it also doubles as uh, cooling ports. Um, I think that's a huge step in the right direction. It's always cool taking a look at these weapons that that are a possibility of the future. So I'm really interested to see what the Gen 4 looks like, and you know this might be kind of what the uh, United States military end, ends up going with. And that's, yeah. that's that's cool to be able to get these first looks. So we can't thank you enough for uh, coming out here and bringing it out, and uh, of course for you bringing your beautiful self out to Idaho, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming yeah, it's out, brother. It's quite tropical. I appreciate you. you. Well, guys. Um, as always, glad you could uh, stay tuned and train, get out there, have a good time. But the biggest thing is always going to be our dad advice. And since we have St. John here, you're uh -huh. like a dad to so many people. Um, yeah. You know, I, I definitely feel inadequate right now. So, you know, if you could give our audience some dad advice, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, you blindsided me last time, so I actually thought about it. So oh, did is, you? There's way more pressure on this one because it yeah. actually might be yeah, helpful. Yeah, but you might say something profound. Yeah, no, I don't think so. It could actually be worse that it didn't come off the cuff, right? Yeah. But uh, I think what I came up with was... Uh, Marry for money and looks. Love, love will come later. <laughs> <All right. laughs> there, there, 